Hi everyone, this is James from Anemone Aquascape Gallery. Welcome back for part two of my 120 centimeter planted tank build. If you haven't seen the last video where I built this hardscape, please feel free to go back and check it out. I'll try to leave a, uh, a link above so that way you can find it easily. So I want to talk about the plant selection for this aquarium. So usually I try to reuse plants as much as possible, especially when I'm using the same types of plants that I had in a previous aquascape. So if you remember my 90 centimeter aquarium, I had Monte Carlo uh, carpet that was growing in it. And um, I also wanted to use a Monte Carlo plant for this Iwagumi as well. And I had plans to, I had saved all the plants from my 90 centimeter. I had planned to reuse it again for this aquarium. Um, kind of towards the last moment or so, I decided against it. And part of the reason was um, <clears throat> that 90 centimeter had quite a bit of algae issues, which is why I took it down a little bit earlier than I would have normally. So I had some cyanobacteria and um, it had very minimal like pest snails in it. But the biggest thing was that there was so much moss in that aquarium. And whenever you trim moss, as even if you try to siphon it out as you're cutting it, inevitably some of the moss is just gonna end up in the Monte Carlo carpet. And I really wanted to try to avoid um, allowing, uh, I guess, snails or moss or anything that might kind of overwhelm this aquascape. So, I decided not to reuse any of the plants and instead just use fresh brand new ones for this tank. In my previous experience, I haven't really noticed a difference in quality from different sorts of vendors in which you order plants from, um, especially if they're tissue culture plants. Um, despite that, I still decided to order 88 plants for this build. I decided to purchase six cups of Monte Carlo and five cups of Hemianthus micranthamoides, also commonly known in the US at least as pearl weed. And um, both of these plants were bought um, as ADA tissue cultures. And as you can kind of see, it's a little bit sparse and maybe I didn't buy quite enough of it, but I'll go more into that. As I was building the hardscape, I had a really good idea of the layout of the plants and how I wanted to do it. Um, but before I set up an aquarium, I usually try to envision everything, maybe even physically put the cups in just to see how the spacing of things would work and if I have enough quantity of each plant. When preparing the plants, I find it really easy with the ADA tissue cultures. It's kind of like a liquid gel at the bottom. Some of them are really um, stiff and, and uh, jelly-like and hard to, to take apart but this is more of just like a liquid so when I'm pulling out the plants from the cups it's really easy and kind of cleaner and it's easy to pull them apart and get them prepared for the aquarium. I try to break them into many portions but um, unlike most people I actually try to do them in larger pieces and the only reason for this is because um, it's hard to know at the, that time when you're kind of breaking the plants apart exactly how many portions you need for the aquascape. So usually I'll break them into slightly larger pieces and then as I'm kind of planting and seeing the um, spread of where the plants are going I can determine if I need to break them up into smaller portions. Usually when I go to plant an aquarium I prefer it to be completely dry. And what I mean by that is some people like to um, spray down the soil first and then plant. Some people like to fill up with water and then plant. Um, the reason I prefer it to be completely dry is I find that it's the easiest for me and it's the cleanest. And what I mean by that is if the soil is kind of wet, then usually the soil starts to get stuck to the tweezers as you're trying to get the plants in. So usually for me, I like to have it completely dry but I always like to try different ways of doing things. So um, I tried what I, I, at least what I think to believe is the ADA style, which is where they kind of raise the level of the um, water up to the edge of where the soil is. So meaning if I wanted to plant 
the, the foreground area, I'm gonna lift the water level to approximately here. And so I started off by doing this and I found that for me, maybe because I don't have the experience with it, it was just a lot slower. And um, it took very long to plant this foreground area. And as I realized that the substrate levels are so different in different parts of the aquarium, it kind of became more difficult to do that style. So about halfway through, I kind of just gave up and started planting the, the background area dry. And for me personally, it, it was so much quicker to plant the background than it was for the foreground. But let me know if you have different ways of doing it or if there's a tip that you have that makes it easier for you to plant. I didn't perfectly portion all my plants. So what I mean by that is as I kept going, it, I started to run out of plants towards the end. So as I'm building this hill up here, I really almost completely ran out of plants and then I had to start breaking it up into smaller pieces and even take a little bit from the foreground area where I left too much. Um, at the end of the day, it's a little bit more spread out than I'm used to. I usually like to plant really densely, but because the aquarium is so big and it would have cost so much to buy that much plant, I was willing to um, try to go a little bit more sparse and just be very careful about the water quality and ensuring that the plants are growing well. Both these two plants grow incredibly fast when they're in good condition, so I'm hoping that long term it wouldn't make a difference for me anyway. After I finished planting, I decided to fill up the tank and, um, and making sure that I did not ruin my aquascape in any way, I found kind of a quarter with some rock work where I didn't have to worry about the water disturbing the substrate or the plants at all. And I always let it fill up really slowly, especially at first, to make sure that nothing, none of my work is ruined in any way. I was also a little bit worried that when I started filling up the aquarium and the soil starts to settle, that there was a possibility that some of the rocks might start sliding or falling down. And thankfully, none of that happened at all. Uh, hardly any of the soil even rolled down at all either. So everything stayed in really good shape when I was filling it up. And uh, that was something that I was really worried about, so it was a big relief. So now that the aquarium's up and running, um, I'm doing a lot of work to make sure that I get a good start on it. Um, in the past, I would use more mature filter media that I would use from a previous aquarium. In this case, I use a completely fresh filter that has no beneficial bacteria whatsoever. So basically, this is a completely uncycled aquarium and with the nitrogen cycle and the way that um, just aquariums work in general, I'm kind of at a high risk of ammonia or nitrite or you know other things that are going to negatively affect the health of the plants. So for the next week or so, every day I'm going to be um, doing water changes of about maybe 30 to 40%. Usually I'd say like 50 to 60 on smaller aquariums, but this is just so much water and I use an RO system. So I have to replenish all that water and make it um, to, to get it ready for this. So I'm gonna just do about 30 to 40% every day. I'm also gonna be using Seachem Stability. And the reason I'm using the Seachem Stability is just because it helps to um, quicken the, the time in which you're going to be cycling your aquarium. Um, besides that, I'm still trying to get the CO2 indicator just right. Um, before yesterday, I didn't have enough CO2 and now I'm putting too much in. Um, as far as the health of the plants, it doesn't matter at all, but I want to make sure I get it dialed in before um, the tank starts maturing and definitely before I start adding any livestock. Well, I hope you enjoyed this aquarium and this build. Um, I'm definitely going to post updates in several weeks when things start to develop a little bit more. Um, if you're interested in seeing any of that, you're more than welcome to like and subscribe. You can also comment below and let me know your thoughts. If you want to follow up with me on Instagram where I'm going to be posting this quite frequently, you can at Anemone Aquascape Gallery. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, bye.